Oh. It's already said you caught when I said. Ooh. What a job. I feel like I'm on Gardener's World. So basically, our little wildlife pond is on a woodland edge, which, because it gets plenty of sun, it's not it's not in the woods. It still gets plenty of sunlight. All of these nice leaves. Ecosystem going on in there. But what happens is. All the leaves from the deciduous trees all fall off within a very short time. And they fill up our ponds here at the Falcon Centre. Now we've got two choices. We can say, well, that's quite natural, we'll leave it. Well, if you actually go and look at any shallow pond inside a woodland, it has a really limited amount of life. It usually has no plant life at all. It's very, very incredibly acidic water. And you'll get mosquito lava. You'll sometimes get newts and you'll sometimes get frogs spawning in there. But very poor because it's gets very little pond life in the way of vegetation. So what we do in the autumn, once all the leaves are off, we net out as much as we can. We leave quite a bit, and if I show you in a second why, why they're important to a degree, have a look at this. Now in here, you should see thousands and thousands of water slaters all feasting on the, the rotten leaves. Now, they're, they're a relative of the woodlouse, which eats rotten vegetation on land, and these guys eat rotten vegetation in the water. And if we've got lots of those, we've got lots of food for amphibians and bigger animals. Now, it's important for us to get most of these leaves out because it's a small area, and what'll happen, if we don't bother, within two or three years, the actual pond will be incredibly acidic and pretty much full up with silt. There'll be hardly any water in there at all. Because just like on land, watching vegetation, on land it, it becomes part of the soil. In there it becomes silt and fills up the pond. So we always, once in the autumn, get out as many leaves as we can, as I've said about three times. Now, there's times to do this. It's still mild. If we do this in the middle of winter, any amphibians like frogs hibernating at the bottom of this pond are gonna get disturbed. It'll probably won't do them any good at all. If we do it in the spring, really early spring, amphibians are already spawning or getting ready to spawn. And if we do it any other time through the spring and summer, all the pond life is thriving, all the tadpoles and newt larva, and we can't separate them. There's just too much stuff in there. So for us, we find this is the best time before they go into hibernation, but when most things have left the pond that need to. The small things, like all these tiny pond slaters, they'll go on the side and get composted. But anything like dragonfly larva or bigger things that we can see, we pop them back in. Emily, 
I'm scared. It's okay, okay, ponies. Good boy. <laughs> it's gone so grey, I can't believe it. <laughs> Just blends in, camouflage. Good boy. <laughs> Just about to get over to Icarus Falkery and clean out some of the aviaries and mews there and feed the birds of course. It's a pretty rainy day today but like I do every single morning I've just popped down into the reptile room uh, just to check everything really, check everything's okay. Uh, we'll be back in here later on today but why don't you come with me and just have a little quick tour at some of the animals that we've got here and I'm going to say you look at them, see if you can guess what species they are. We're not going to tell you yet. back in the reptile room and here's what we went to collect a beautiful yellow tailed Kribo this is just one species away from my all-time favorite snake which is an eastern indigo snake which I first saw in my snake books as a kid both are dry marking and this is Dry mark on Carice, which is a beautiful American colubrid that's going to grow to several feet long and get even more beautiful as she grows up. This is a real snake for me, if I'm perfectly honest. Have a look at that. We'll keep checking back with her as she grows. Yellow tail Crevo because this species of Crevo turns out to have a yellow tail and the patterns and markings will change a little as she grows up. What a beautiful, beautiful animal. Tiny baby that's going to grow into a huge colubrid, even longer than our false water cobras. An intelligent genus of snakes. Now, don't forget, snakes aren't super intelligent animals. But as snakes go, the dry mark on, very hyperactive, very intelligent, and just as messy as my false water cobras. 
high metabolism, lots of food, lots of smelly poo. But we can deal with that to study something this beautiful.